I'm going to get started. Could someone just give me a thumbs up whether they can hear me and see my uh, slides? So we can. Uh, <laughs> I know that I'm just, you know, not talking to myself here. <laughs> so, thanks, Nick. So my talk today is on how to slide your release past the incubator, and. Oh, let me, uh, sorry, just give me one sec here. Uh... Yeah, that'll, that'll work better if I do that. So first off, just a little bit about who I am. Um, uh, my name's Justin McLean. I've been with Apache for a number of years now. Uh, I'm currently one of the nine board members, and I'm also currently the VP of the Apache Incubator. So I make sure that all, the <coughs> sorry, I make sure that all the podlings submit their reports on time, and that the board gets a, a, a nice report. And I'm also responsible for reviewing that report as well. <laughs> so I sort of wear two hats there. Um, I'm also a, a freelance developer and educator. Um, I'm also involved in the Incubator PMC, being the, the VP, and I'm involved in a few other PMCs as well. And I also mentor several projects. And I have reviewed hundreds of releases, probably of the order of about 500, I think, at this point. Um, I did have an accurate count at one time, but I sort of lost that after I got past the 350 mark a couple of years back. So, uh, so I generally you know, know, know how to review a release and, and what goes into it and what you need to look out for. And I know some of the common issues that you can run into. So first off here, we do have a lot of people who seem that this is their first Apache con and they may be new to Apache. So they may not know what the Apache incubator is. So the Apache incubator is the main entry point for new projects. It's not the only one, but it is certainly the main one. And it's where communities come to Apache and they learn how to be an Apache project and they grow their project around them and hopefully graduate from, from the incubator. That usually takes a, a, a couple of years. So just a little more detail on that process there. So we, we have an incubating process so that we projects there's a few things. There's some startup things that we, we need to do, and that includes making sure that everything complies with the Apache license. Um, but we also want to make sure that the, the podling follows some ASF values. It's often referred to as the Apache way. Um, and I'll, I'll speak a little bit about that in, in a minute. But it means that they, they follow the, the typical structure of projects that they have contributors who commit to the, the project. Uh, committers who have the commit bit and can actually have access to the repo and a, a PMC, or well, in the case of a, a podling a P, a, a, or incubating project, it's called a PPMC. So we also need to know that the projects grant more responsibility uh, via Metro Otterstree and that everything is done in the open. So this means open communication on the mailing list. It means that everything is transparent and um, and in particular that people act as individuals and not the company they work for. And, and this is maybe one of the biggest problems that I've seen some recent projects have some, some issues with. So uh, basically we want, we want the project to be able to learn how, how to follow this Apache way. So what, what is this Apache way that I've been talking about? Well, there's sort of a number of versions of it, and it takes a while to sort of understand all of it. But I've sort of got some of the main points here. The first off, Apache Software Foundation is a charity, uh, and we make software for the public good. So, And that software is given away freely. We're also pragmatic. Our business, our license is business friendly, and it means that 
uh, you can take something that's Apache license and, and use it, but you don't have to contribute back to the project if you don't want to, unlike some other licenses. Um, we think that in the long term, that gives more opportunity for, for people to contribute. Some of them won't contribute, but that's, that's okay. But it, in the long term, it means that more will. We're also about the community behind the project. Uh, and that is means important things such as collaboration, consensus, and diversity. And you might have heard that we have a saying that it's called uh, uh, community over code. There's also this concept of merit that, that the more you do, the more responsibility you have. And the project needs to recognize merit by voting you in as a committer or as a PMC member. And it's not just code contributions that, that gain merit. You also need to uh, recognize people who contribute to testing and documentation and speak at conferences and uh, help users and you know all those sort of things as well. Uh, one of the really important things is that everything is open and in the public view and that discussions occur on the mailing list. This means that everyone can participate. So it means that the, the people who are not in your time zone can, can join in. It means that the people who only work part-time on the project can, can join in. Uh, it means that the hobbyists can join in. So, and that's a really important concept. And also that uh, we work via consensus. And that means finding a way that, that everyone can work together to move forward, even though there might be sometimes be some, some disagreements. So the current state of play for the Apache Incubator is that we've got uh, 48 projects in the incubator. It's remained relatively stable over the, over the last couple of years. The, it was a little higher a few years back. Um, but I think at that point in time, uh, the incubator probably had a few too many projects and, and not enough mentors to be able to, to handle all uh, that work. There are 306 incubator PMC members, but not all of these are active. And it usually takes around two years in the incubator, with some projects stay longer. We've got a couple in the three or four year mark at the moment. And I think the longest a project's been in the incubator is about seven years. So uh, we have about a dozen releases a month. And one thing that has improved in recent years is that the number of releases that pass the incubator vote. And I'll talk about this in a minute also. And we've got around about the 90% mark, which is, which is good to see. So the whole point of, of making uh, a release is uh, that it has to follow some, some Apache policies and also some values as well that we, we have. And there's a few simple things that, you, that it must have. It, it must be a contained source code and doesn't have any compiled code in there. It needs to be cryptographically signed in a, in a particular way. Uh, and mostly these days, scripts can do that all automatically for you. So that's that's not a big deal. Um, it must have an incubating disclaimer. Uh, and there's two of those uh, that it used to be that there was just, you had just had to say that this was an incubating project. Uh, that we've now introduced a second disclaimer, which makes it a little easier to make releases in some cases. It also has to have a the Apache license file and a notice, a notice file, and these must follow the Apache policy. If you bundle any third party code, in your software, you also need to follow their license terms as well. Uh, and also follow Apache policy on that. And that generally just means mentioning the license in your license file and, and maybe putting something in notice as well. And um, any of the license that you do include, uh, they need to be compatible with the Apache license. So they can't add any restrictions on top of it. And all the source files need to have those have headers. Uh, of the files that you've created in the project so it's not not third party files so they're they're basically everything that needs to be done to 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 make a valid source release so i'll just mention that work in progress disclaimer and um we were having some problems in the incubator where uh some projects were taking a long time to to be able to get releases that compl complied with policy and they would often have to do many revisions of release candidates. So 
in order to, to fix this up, what we've done is we've introduced a work in progress disclaimer where you can list some of the things that may be wrong with the release um, that may not comply with ASF policy. Um, and, and that's all fine as long as people are aware of these issues. Um, the whole point of, of an incubating project is that it, it you know, it's learning this process and it may not get things right the first time or the second time. Uh, and so the idea is that you list the issues that are in this disclaimer and these issues need to be fixed before you can graduate. So at the point of graduation, you'll you'll have a release that complies with uh, all of ASF policy and, and the Apache license. So the way that releases are made is you, you first make a release and then, uh, well, a release candidate, I should say, uh, move to the next slide, a release candidate. And then on your dev mailing list, you, you vote on that release. And to, to for it to be a release, you only need three plus one votes and more plus ones than minus ones. So a minus one is not a veto. So someone can't say that we shouldn't release this because of this little trivial issue here. Um, that being said, minus one vote should be taken seriously and, and considered, and it may be the fact that the release manager decides that a new release candidate is, is needed. So if the, if the vote fails or if the release manager decides that a, a new candidate is needed, then, you know, obviously those issues are fixed and a new candidate is good, then you do the vote again. So once the vote actually passes, then you vote on the incubator general mailing list. Uh, and again, you need three plus one votes and more plus ones than minus ones. Um, and that same thing goes. Now, generally, these votes last 72 hours, but that is actually just a guideline. And, and that's an interesting thing about Apache is that most of these things that, that you think of as policies are really guidelines. They're, they're ways that this is a good way that we've found for things to work, but they may not apply to all projects. And, and certainly since becoming my involvement in Apache in more in recent time because of my involvement in board and reviewing a lot of projects reports, it's made me realize that there are actually a lot of variations in between different projects and not all projects do things the same way. So why might you get a, a minus one vote on, on your release? Um, and there's a few common issues, uh, generally things like unexpected binaries in a, in a source release. You know, we are making open source software, so <laughs> you shouldn't have compiled code in there. Um, we have some categories of licenses uh, that, that split up into category A, category B, and category X. And I'll talk a little bit about them a, a little later. And so if you include something from category X, then that has something that is not compatible with the Apache license. And so that's usually something like the GPL license. So that, that you can't make a release like that. You also can't depend on anything that's in category X. So the source release also can't include anything from category B. Um, so they're the, probably the most common issues. And then you get to, to some other issues that are, are, are not so common. Um, having issues with licenses were notice. Uh, they're probably reasonably common and down to you know, copyright issues or you know you don't have permission to distribute some files that you've included in the release. Um, and then you get to some minor issues like uh, missing license headers or, or you know, things along those lines. So, and, and the whole point of this is that it doesn't have to be perfect. You, you wanna make each release better than the previous one. So it's not essential that you get it right the first time. Um, and as I said before, when you're starting out, you may not be aware of everything that you need to do and you may not be familiar with the policy. And our current policy and guidelines don't cover all situations. Uh, in recent years, there's, there's actually been a bit of a gap, I think, between uh, the way policy has gone forward and what projects are actually doing because now we have lots more ways of, of distributing software on many, many third-party platforms, uh, you know, like Docker, for instance. Uh, and our policy hasn't really kept up to pace and can address that. We're trying to do some things about that at the moment, uh, and hopefully you'll see some action on that, you know, soon. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, different projects do things in different ways, uh, and all of these are, are good and can comply with, with, you know, the values that Apache holds. So uh, what you want to aim for is something that doesn't have any surprises in it and that a user wouldn't see, think, go, oh, I didn't think that was the case. So, 
So, and, and as I was just saying there, that like there's not one right like, answer. That there's um, our documentations can sometimes be a little confusing and sometimes a little out of date, and sometimes our cultural knowledge isn't well documented. So there's some things that are common practice that are just maybe not written down. Um, one of the other issues that the incubator does have is that there, there's quite a large group of incubator PMC members, and there's quite a lot of differing operation opinions there on what's correct and what is not correct and what would is the best way to, to, to follow policy. Uh, and depending on the project, there's often multiple ways that you can come up with to comply with it, and often they, they take very, very different forms. So my advice here is just, you know, try and err on the side of caution and look to, at previous releases and see what they have done. Um, hopefully more recent ones than the ones going back, because that can certainly help. So some of the common problems that you run into, uh, licensing is, is definitely one of them where um, some issues can occur. And it's, sometimes it's poorly understood about what's required. Um, and, you know, mostly developers just want to write code. They don't want to deal with legal stuff. I, I can totally understand that. Um, the language used in licensing is quite complex and can be a, a barrier to people whose who's native tongue is English, let alone people who don't speak English as their first language. Uh, and, and also ASF policy has changed over time. So occasionally you'll run into, into projects that may have been following policy, but are now not because something something's changed. Um, and sometimes those changes are gradual and, and sometimes they, they happen quite suddenly. So you, you, you need to keep on top of it and be aware of what's, what's going on. On top of the licensing, um, which you know, gives you certain, the certain legal obligations that you need to comply with there, uh, Apache policy adds another layer on top of that, and there's a, a few new things. So for example, we need to have a license file, a notice file, and we need to list all licenses in the license file. Now, an, a project that's not an ISF project can also use the Apache license, but they don't need to comply with ASF policy. So they don't need to do any of those two things. Um, and we also at Apache have a, a bit more respect for third-party licenses and headers, and we'll definitely make sure that the headers stay attached to the files and are, are not changed without the owner's permission. So when you're assembling the, the license and not notice file, there's, there's a thing called a, a guiding principle. And this guiding principle is that basically you want it to contain anything that's referenced in the license and notice there is what's actually in the distribution. So it's not something that's a dependency that's, that's not included in the distribution. So you only need to mention stuff that's actually included in the release and not stuff that's not in the release. Um, and this applies to both source and binary artifacts. And this has a, an implication in that the license and notice file of the source and binaries may differ because of that. So what else do you need to look out for when you're going through creating these files and making a release? Well, often you'll you'll get you'll be bundled some some third party product uh, in with your release or software. Um, and it's always good to check to see what it's contains. Just because it says on the label that it's MIT licensed, doesn't mean that everything inside it might be MIT licensed. Um, you might find some hidden surprises in there that you weren't expecting. And worst case, you may actually find that you know there's something that's category X, so, such as under a GPL license hidden inside it. Or you might find that it has something that is actually not under an open source license at all, and you wouldn't have permission to distribute. Um, and this often comes up with photos. Um, and, and other resources like fonts. Uh, and the licensing around fonts in particular is quite complex and you need to be very careful on there. Um, one other thing, to, a good thing to do is have a look at if there's any links in the code that points to where the code came from. You can go have a look at those and see how that code is licensed. Uh, now this may depend on how complex your, your the release artifact is that you're creating. In some cases, this is quite a trivial exercise, and you know it's it's quite simple just to go through it, and, and there's not much to be done. In other cases, it can be quite complex to, to, to do. 
So we do have some tools that do help you um, put these together. Uh, there's a project called um, RAT, which is a, an Apache project. And it will basically, you can run RAT over your, your release and it will find things such as binaries and it'll look at all the licenses in there. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, like any tool, it, it has a few rough edges, uh, but it is certainly very useful uh, and will save you a lot of work. There's a few things that it won't pick up. It won't, for example, find double headers in stuff. Um, and it won't also check for multiple licenses in the same file. So you really have to find those two things by hand. And that's, um, I wouldn't say reasonably common, but it does come up from, from time to time. It also doesn't know about all software licenses. Um, and one thing that has a feature in it that you can make uh, an exclusion list. And so you can tell it to ignore a whole lot of things. And a common issue with releases is that people make these exclusion lists too wide. Um, and it actually means that it doesn't check something that it, that it should check uh, and do it. I, I When I'm checking releases, I just rely on a few simple tools. I always run rat over it. But I also have a, a couple of little scripts that I use, which are just basically um, glorified greps. Uh, and just look for common patterns in things. So for example, if I search for the word GPL, you know, if something's or general public, um, it's if it finds something there, then there's a chance that it's got maybe some GPL license software in there. And you know, you can need to have a look at that. Uh, you can also just do it like a search for the word copyright, pipe it to, to sort minus u, so you get all the unique occurrences of that. Uh, and then you can have a look through 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 that and see what that that's picked up. And, and this is also a, a nice way to compare between releases because you can do that on two consecutive releases and then compare the do the diffs of the files. And if they haven't changed, then you know the license and notice file wouldn't need to have changed. But there are differences, but the license files are still the same. Then yeah, maybe there's something that needs to be looked at there. So this can just give you a, a little bit of a sanity check uh, in, in working out whether you. you may have missed something. I was speaking about uh, photos before, and um, yeah, photos can be problematic. Um, I've actually have, had to vote minus one four times because of cat photos in a release. <laughs> um, it's unfortunate, but it has happened. So one good way of just double checking this is, is find all your images. There might be other things other than JPEGs in there, but you can you know, just do a, a fine exec, copy them all to a directory, and then, you know, have a look at all the images visually and see if there's anything there that looks like a stock image or looks like a professional image. Um, and, you know, you need to make sure that you've got the rights and that it's under a, an appropriate license and that you can actually distribute it. Um, and if you do find something that looks a little suspect, you can generally quite easily quickly find out. It, it'll often have metadata in the, in the image itself. Uh, which may describe the license, uh, or you can try and find the original license by using a, a reverse image search in Google, uh, and that will generally point you to, to the original image. Sometimes they're, they're quite hard to track down, um, but you know if there's some doubt there, then it's probably better just to replace it with an image that you, you, you've made yourself. So all releases must contain a license file. Um, and this file needs to be called license, well, license.text, and it needs to exist in the root directory. And the license file will contain the Apache license and then a, a list of all the licenses of other bundled software that's in that release candidate or in that distribution. Um, so if some of the, the text to these licenses can be quite long, so what's preferred is that you just put a link there. And that's not a hyperlink, like a URL. But it's a link. Uh, generally, what you'd do is you'd make a directory called licenses, and then you'd put all the licenses in there. And then in the license file, you'd mention, you know, for more information, see this file. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, because binaries may have different things embedded inside them, then it's quite likely that the license and file will need to be different for both the source and, and the binaries file. Along with the license file, you also need a, a notice file. And 
this will contain a, a little copyright at the top from, from the ASF, well, and uh, a notice that says it was developed at the ASF. Um, and this needs to be pretty minimal and only needs to contain what's what's legally required uh, because it's it affects downstream projects. So anyone that uses your project uh, will they will need to look at this notice file and include some of the contents in there. So there's only a few things that need to go in there, and they are what's called relocated copyright notices. So this is if you've had permission to remove a copyright notice from some of the files in, in your release, um, you should mention that in the notice file there. Um, if you've also bundled any other Apache license software and that contains a notice file, then you need to look at that notice file and, and put some of the contents of that notice file into your notice file. Um, and there's a, a couple of other required notices, but they're pretty rare um, and you generally don't need to, to worry about them. Uh, one common problem is that people tend to put licensing information in the notice file and that it shouldn't exist in the notice file. That should actually exist in the license file instead. So I mentioned the license categories before, and there, there are three main categories here. There is, the first category is, is category A, and that's basically any license that is compatible with the Apache license. And so any anything that's in this category, you can bundle into your release, and you can also depend on it. And there's a whole lot of common licenses here. Uh, the Apache 2.0 license, obviously, uh, the Apache 1.1 license. Um, there's uh, most BSD licenses, the, except the ones with the advertising clause, MIT, and a few other common ones there that you, you may be familiar with. The second category is category B. Uh, and these have some form of restriction on them. And the restriction may be minor, uh, but generally means that they can't be included in a source release. But you are allowed to include them in a binary release if they're in a binary form. Because generally the, the, the restriction is around modifications of code. So if you include it in a binary form, there's, there's, there's basically no chance that you can modify the code. Uh, and therefore, those those clauses in that licenses won't apply. And there's there's two common ones that you'll run into, um, uh, well, three maybe, and that's the, the CDDL license and the Eclipse license, EPL license, uh, Mozilla public license as well. That, that's probably less common these days. And also most Creative Commons licenses, and this is probably the most common one uh, that you you'll run into there. There's You've got to be very careful with the Creative Commons licenses and including content that is licensed under Creative Commons in an Apache product. If it's something like an image, uh, then that's generally fine. And, and that's because it's in binary form and it will have to be include it in the binary release, but not in the source release. And the final category is category X, which you can't include in a release and you can't depend on. Uh, and there's a few exceptions uh, for things like build tool. And there's also an exception that if it's something that you that's a dependency, but not everyone needs it, so it's an optional thing, as long as you're very clear about that this is optional and that the license isn't compatible, then that's okay. So GPL is the is the most common one there. Um, and I think also the, the strangely enough, the Apache 1.0 license probably falls into category X, but I've, I've never run into an instance where we've, we've had to, to, to double check that. So there's a few things that you know you look for when you're creating a release. Uh, the first one would be uh, no unexpected binary files in the release. So again, we're making open source software, and so that's got to be source code. They, they, you can't have compiled code in a source release. So that means no executables, no DLLs, no jars, or class files. Um, it also means no minified J JS without the source as well, because while it's not compiled, um, it it's not the source code. So again, you know, the whole point about making open source software is that you have all the code there that you can do, and you, well, you can sort of unminify JS. It's pretty ugly. So the other thing is that uh, 
headers so that you know all Apache licensed source files have to have an ASF header. Uh, and there are actually two different ASF headers. There's one for software developed at the Apache Software Foundation, and there's another one for third parties to use. So you've got to use the use the correct one. And the last thing that you have to do when you're making a release is that that can actually be compiled from code. So someone can come along and easily compile it. And so it, it needs to have some instructions on how to do this. And this is usually in you know, the README or something along those lines. Um, and you know, it's always good to give a, a bit more information than that as well. You know, if it doesn't work on a platform, please note that. If there's some dependencies that you're required to install beforehand, then note that. Um, so you want to make it easy for someone to follow and, and, and to be able to do this. And sometimes this can be the most difficult part in making releases so that, that they are actually easy for a user to compile and make the software with. So I'll just go over some of those common mistakes again. So the you know the the um, having unexpected binary files, I compile code in in the source release is certainly something to look out for. Um, getting the contents of license and notice can can be hard. Uh, and it may take a few iterations. With the new disclaimer, that makes it a lot easier because you can just lift, list that as one of the issues in the in the work in progress disclaimer and said, well, the license may not quite be up to date yet. And if you do know what the issues are, you could also list them as well. So um, the binary and source files may not have the same license and notice file. So if they if they've got extra bits put in inside the binary, that's very likely that the license is going to be different. Uh, missing heading headers is a common one, or in some cases replacing third-party headings headers, or in some places putting ASF headers on top of third-party code. Uh, they're all common situations that you can um, run into. Um, I talked about the rat exclusions and how they sometimes sometimes miss issues. One other issue that's been more on the rise recently is a lot of projects are uh, automating this process to make their releases, and that's a great thing. But in doing all that automation, they often don't do a lot of manual checking, and there's some subtle mistakes that can creep in there, and the, the, the automation may not actually find everything that you expect it does. Um, so do be careful if, you, if you're using automation there. Um, missing a disclaimer. All incubating releases need to have a disclaimer in them. Uh, um, this is fairly rare these days. I, I haven't, I can't think of one in the last year where we've had a release like that. Um, and finally, you need to put the release in the correct place. Uh, there actually has to be in the Apache Mirror distribution system, uh, as well as anywhere else that you want to want to put it. So, just a note on binary distributions here. So they're not considered official releases, but they still need to comply with ASF policies and guidelines and and all the rest. Um, so it's best if you if you also treat those as as a real release. And mo what most projects do is release both the source and the binary distribution at, at the same time. And as I've mentioned a few times now, that the license and notice file may be different. Uh, because the contents of the binary distribution could, is going to be different from the source release. Well, maybe different. It, it, in some cases, it's not. So that's uh, about it from me. So maybe just one thing before I finish up is that you know if you're new to this and you're just a, an incubating project starting out, you may be a bit confused about some of these policies and you know what the right thing is to do. And so where can you go for help? Well, the best place is to ask on your, your, your own mailing list. Uh, your mentors there should be following along, and they will be able to help you. Uh, if they don't, you can ask your mentors di directly. Uh, and if they can't help either, then you can always ask the incubating incubator project itself. Um, there's a mailing list called general at incubator.apache.org, uh, and that will uh, it's also a good place to have a look. Uh, you can look at previous releases that have been made recently and see how the vote's gone on those. And you can also see you know, some common issues where other releases maybe not have been successful on the first time and, and what they've run into. If you've got an issue with licensing, 
then the legal discuss mailing list is the best place to do that. So just finally, um, the incubator, we're here to help. Uh, and if you've got any suggestions on how documentation or process or anything can be improved, um, please email us and we're happy to talk about it. So that's it from me. I'm just going to open it up for questions now. And I'll see. I haven't been looking at the chat as I've been giving this, so hopefully there's already a couple of questions there uh, that I can answer. All right. Let's have a look what we've got here. Uh, uh, Nick, I can see you've got a question there uh, saying that this can be hard. I'm not sure what you're referring to by this. Do you, do you mind if you uh, put that up there? Yeah, I, I think what you're saying there is that, yeah, this it is best if this work is done in the open and discussed because you often... Off, the more people that can can look at this, the better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, sorry, you just uh, typed in the the channel there that all discussion needs to be open and public. So yeah, if this is discussed in the open, then more people are going to have eyes on it, and more people are going to have input to it, and it's more likely that it's going to be be correct. <laughs> Julian asked, "Why do I hate cats?" I don't hate cats. <laughs> I quite like cats. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, and do we have any other questions? Uh, Nick also says there that things like the MySQL exception for Apache. I don't believe there is a MySQL for Apache. Um, MySQL is not under a compatible license, and it can't be a dependency of an Apache project unless it's optional. So that means that you might have, say, two or three database engines that you could use, and because MySQL uh, is one of those three, you could use it, but it could not be uh, a, a pure dependency with no other database engines, is my understanding of that. Yeah, the um, I'm not sure where that discussion took place, Nick, about MySQL, but the um, it's certainly not mentioned in the uh, legal FAQ page. Um, Nick, you're you're saying there that they called it a FOSS exec exception. The problem with that is that it still puts a restriction upon the on the Apache license and basically means that it couldn't be used for commercial purposes when software under the Apache license can be. So um, uh, I'd be interested to know where that discussion took place. If you could point me out to it, I'll, I'll uh, be there. There's certainly nothing in the, the legal FAQ that we've currently got that, that mentions this. All right, if there are no other questions, I think we'll we'll call that a day because it's about time for the next talk to get started. Hope you enjoyed the talk and um, I'll see you around.